Hello? Hello, 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 hello everyone. Hello, hello everyone. Good morning. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Hi, Kiriti. Hi, Praneet. Hi, Madhusudan. Mom calls me John. Hi, Anna. Pramod, hi, hi. It's Tillu Raju, hi. Harish Patel, hi, brother. Sai Shashank, hi. Ravi, Ravi Tej, hi, bro. Good night. Kiriti Varma, hi. So, so today we have a live session, right? Uh, regarding uh, B Pharmacy, B Pharmacy, sorry. You put it like that. B Pharmacy career. So this live session will be useful for all the pharma candidates and also chemistry background people. And on top of it, after this live session, we have another live session with a writer Padma Bhushan. So that will start around, I think 11, 11 p.m. IST with Suhas bro. So this is informative, that is entertaining. Stay tuned. Um, so just in case, if you have uh, any of your friends or family who is kind of uh, looking for uh, career guidance in uh, uh, pharmacy industry especially, ask them to join this uh, uh, live session so that it will be more helpful for them. And also at the same time, we will be uh, uh, saving this and also posting this in our Instagram and uh, YouTube for your future reference. Okay. So uh, I think it's been already a little late. Uh, I will invite our guest. I'll take him to the live. Uh, from there we'll move forward and thereafter if we have some time we'll definitely uh, address some of the questions you're asking here in the comments okay i think many people many of our followers they are very generous so they kind of respond to your your questions even though if i don't respond some other people gonna respond in the comments so give it a try there are a lot of people responded in our last session also so if there is specific question, ask here, someone will respond to you. So Anil bro, I'll be taking you to the live. Uh, I think you already joined. If not, I'm gonna send you a request. Hi, hi bro hi bro how are you good good how are you good good so all good yeah all good all good yeah good to go yeah. ready to go yes yes nice 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 so in which time zone you live bro uh, eastern. eastern time zone okay yeah. okay so no problem hopefully you had your breakfast yes yes yeah yeah so bro uh, let's start with your little introduction okay uh, what is like right from India? Like, how did it started? When it started? How did you ended up in US? And then okay. your your job? Just high level introduction. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, first of all, you know, I would like to you know thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. You now, yeah. uh, trying to help the students and also, yeah, myself uh, Anil Kumar Dudam. Uh, my last name is Dudam. I think I didn't I didn't tell you that earlier. You know that was not on the you know flyer thing. Right. Yeah, so I completed my bachelor's in pharmacy uh, back in 2009 okay. uh, uh, from you know Telangana, Hyderabad, mm -hmm. and then um, I I worked for a little bit for about a year. Uh, I worked as a medical service representative uh, for Van vaccine. Oh, okay. And then I came to United States in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I completed my master's in chemistry from Sacred Heart nice. University, Connecticut. Nice. I started my career from 2013 January. So by this January, I completed 10 years wow. in industry. Great. So I worked uh, in East Coast. I was in New Jersey for 
almost five years. Then I was I went to Chicago. I lived there for four years. Then mm-hmm. I was in San Diego earlier, and now I moved to North Carolina. Right. So I started my career as a chemist, like you know, entry mm-hmm. level, and mm-hmm. right now currently I'm working as a senior manager, uh, uh, regulatory CMC uh, in a company called uh, Ushi STA Pharmaceuticals, uh, based in San Diego, California. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, bro. Great intro. Uh, bro, small thing. Um, are you on your Wi-Fi or internet? Uh, no, I'm on internet. Just, okay. I'm on internet. Yeah. Mobile and internet. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it is it is coming very slow. Uh, uh-huh. I mean, yeah. uh, your video is coming a uh, little lag. Okay. Maybe you want me to turn on my Wi-Fi and see how it goes. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah. is back now the better thing it switched yeah this is way better oh okay <laughs> then uh, sorry sorry yeah. for that yeah mm. it's fine okay so many people have questions about pharmacy uh, career in united states right mm-hmm. um, generally when you started uh, exploring options in united states what all options you had uh, and how did you chose chemistry is it your uh, to go uh, subject or as you got chemistry uh, you took that like uh, can you tell us about yeah. that yeah yeah sure so to be honest um, i mean i'm talking about 2010 so right i'm i'm pretty sure that most folks won't be having any idea because those days the social media presence was very limited i mean right facebook right. facebook just started and uh, you know no insta nothing like that there is no no such information available on the internet right so i was i was always had this interest right from the beginning when i joined mm-hmm. my b pharmacy you know try to go abroad and do some kind of you know uh, you know job related to pharmacy right so i started looking out the universities not only united states i was trying mm-hmm. for australia canada and many other countries mm-hmm. but yeah finally i, I ended up here uh, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest Uh, I only got admitted into chemistry program. Okay. I mean that's how okay. I you know I choose chemistry, which is okay. uh, I mean at that point I was really not sure like you know we don't know anything what I'm going to do in future. Right. But, you know somehow I <clears throat> came here, and during my masters, mm-hmm. so that was I'm so fortunate uh, to be in that um, place where uh, mm-hmm. I got an opportunity to work as a you know on CPT during my masters. Okay. in the pharmacy okay. like you know pharmacy means i'm talking about you know retail pharmacy like you know gotcha. all green and cvs yeah gotcha. so i closely interacted with many folks like you know pharmacist the person okay. who actually you know prescribes in the pharmacy who who prescribe you who deliver you the medicine okay so then i understood you know how the industry works and all so i mean again this 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 brings me to you know broadly classify the industry like you know community pharmacy which is like retail pharmacy and right. the actual industry which currently i'm working in that is a different right so so two years i was doing my masters and i spent my significant amount of time you know working in that you know stores Got nothing but a you know, small pharmacy right and then i graduated still no clue i mean don't okay. know like where to go so somehow one of my uh, friend friend of friend friends when someone told me like you know there is some small laboratory in uh, new jersey okay maybe you can just talk to them okay so i just called them they told you know come down and they they did like you know very very minimal interview and then they asked me to join awesome. so okay. i was so excited right. but uh, the company is just like it's about the lab is just a one room lab uh, oh. small very small okay so i was I, i i don't know right anything so that's how i started right uh, uh, later uh, so i have very limited options so it took me okay i I'll, i'll cut it down i'll cut it down now yeah, i'll yeah. go back again sure. okay. so generally uh, we'll go one question and then one answer uh, to be more clear uh, we will we'll start from almost from masters okay so when you when you were exploring you said uh, you got an opportunity like uh, you got an admit in chemistry right okay. so what all options you can go like let's say you are a b farm or m farm student okay to which other fields you can go because nowadays you see health informatics or there are, there are different things right so let us throw some light on it okay yeah sure so again this this goes back to the interest of the student see uh, right, if, if right. they really want to do something related to pharma like you know i'm talking about a b pharmacy graduate like who just completed pharmacy in right. india right so if they want to study something going forward if they want to graduate in pharmacy related programs 
then right. there are like primarily four to five okay uh, the very the very top one is pharmaceutics masters mm-hmm. in pharmaceutics mm-hmm. and uh, pharmacology um and then uh, medicinal chemistry or you know pharmaceutical chemistry and then uh, regulatory affairs Oh, okay. The fourth one, which is which is quite popular among you know our area uh, students from back in India, India. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the one which you mentioned, health informatics. Uh, mm-hmm. to be to be honest, it's kind of uh, that that was not in there in the United States before. Like, before, right? It, it, uh, health informatics. They just started like uh, four to five years back. Okay. So I mean, which many people. people are you know throwing uh, showing some interest to get into that but right. primarily if the student wants to pursue career in pharmacy i would recommend mm-hmm. going for you know pharmaceutics pharmacology chemistry or you know uh, or regulatory affairs so these are the options got you got you got you so uh, and coming to the admission is it same like you will be taking gre ielts is is it the same process or you guys taking any additional exams for that no exactly same same like you know gre tofel or ielts or something yeah exactly same Same okay. Like How okay? How common is the this subject in universities? Like, only few universities offer these subjects, or you can find in any other university we have in in Italy. Okay, that's, that's a good question. So, um, not many universities offer this. Okay. Like you know, if you if you compare with uh, you know IT, like you know computer science, you, right. you can find in many universities. But like all these pharmaceutics and all, I would say broadly twenty universities roughly, like which are very popular okay. kind of you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, so most of our students will end okay. up in those universities, but chemistry, which I did, mm-hmm. you know, which I completed my masters, chemistry is like almost in all universities. Majority of the universities have a masters in chemistry. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, so likewise, uh, when you came to masters or uh, during the process, uh, did you ended up with any scholarship and what about the opportunities about getting a scholarship? Okay. So. so if if the student is expecting some kind of you know assistance ship or you know any kind of scholarship you have to focus on you know getting admission into state university state you so that's yeah that should be primary focus if okay. you are able to get admission in any program of your interest you know particularly mm-hmm. you know chemistry or physics whatever if it is a state university then there is a possibility of you know getting some kind of funding got you but uh, in my case my university <clears throat> is a private uh, catholic university they don't have you know any funding so understand. yeah understand yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, and then you came to US. Uh, you started your job. Coming to internships uh, uh, because most people end up doing some other jobs, right? They don't really focus on uh, career-related internships. So, right. how did you got to know? Did someone guided you, or did someone uh, uh, referred you? Like, uh, hey, Anil, uh, go to this field. Go to this field. So, how did you? Uh, uh, explore that that particular area so coming to let me talk about internships i know i was expecting this question so internships um, i i i'm just trying to give ground reality right. you know especially right. uh, what works exactly with you know chemistry pharma graduates okay right so it's very challenging no matter mm-hmm. what where you are but right. uh, after the pandemic you know because of this covid and all so mm-hmm. there is a there is more emphasis on the you know companies like they trying to hire people right so especially if the you know students are expecting some kind of internships i would recommend them uh, getting into you know universities in boston you know especially Bo- that's a biotech boston hub boston area oh okay yeah. boston so there is a very, okay yes yeah very good possibility there because they you have so many companies okay but if you if you talk me about you know people working in new jersey or you know some other uh, chicago you know, it's it's highly challenging like you know usually there are very limited and uh, internships work specially like the candidate is local mm-hmm. you know companies try to call them for interview and you know give that opportunity right, right. if you are applying from you know some connecticut to you know california yeah, right. no one is going to call you for interview and right. you know, i know if it is still it is tough. online interview these right, days right. but yeah people don't consider that so internship is that Uh, mm-hmm. that is my answer to that so coming to my interest so as i told you i worked in this uh, pharmacy right mm-hmm. you know, retail pharmacy so i was talking to people like you know the actual pharmacists so they were they were telling me like you know don't end up here don't end up uh, uh, you know working here in the retail pharmacy right right because right, for right, some right. reason whatever the reason so they give me they gave me so many you know whatever you know things so that made me okay now i have to switch so i need to get into the industry right so as soon as i graduated within a couple of weeks i got this call as i told you someone someone told me like this the company right right so right. with no clue with zero knowledge i just entered and started learning from them, right. like you know 
right. now i wish i should have someone you know someone like me who can teach but you know right. there is there is zero zero I'm, zero scope for right. any any kind of information so i learned it very hard way gotcha. um it took at least 3 years to get to know like what i am doing where right. i am going exactly right right yeah. great so and coming to the other other thing what is the easiest uh, uh, like you know uh, easiest vertical or easiest uh, specialization where you can find internship very like very easily and where you have ample number of uh, jobs uh, right so i would recommend as i told you the very first uh, you know top priority would be mm-hmm. pharmaceutics which is pharmaceutics. masters in pharmaceutics okay uh, b pharm six students they might they, they might not because they might have uh, studied that during the undergrad and all, all right. so shooting should be the pharm student should be the top priority okay. i would say okay and um, no matter what and uh, i don't i don't really uh, see like you know don't aim for you know big university and don't don't feel like you know mm-hmm. you have to graduate from the top top notch university that doesn't really you know, that- It doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. Matter. Okay. So if you have masters in pharmaceutics, mm-hmm. you know you have internship opportunities, as you said, mm-hmm. and also you know after that, you know career-wise, you have a better growth. And okay. um, then chemistry, of course, which I am a chemistry graduate, I would recommend okay. that doing. Okay. Um, and uh, other programs are you know depending upon the interest, like you know pharmacology. There are few mm-hmm. folks you know these days you know there people are coming for pharmacology too. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, regulatory affairs. Okay. Regulatory affairs is uh, let me say that thing. relatively easy easy in the sense like easy to get admit mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know the course work kind all it's not like you know you don't uh, you don't need yeah, to yeah we'll in we'll dive into it right we'll yeah. dive into yeah. it so my next following question is like uh, what are the most popular uh, specializations let's say you said pharmacology and then regulatory affairs uh, and then probably research side a lot of people uh, will be engaged and 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 manufacturing side can you can you list some of them uh, which will be uh, more practical or more uh, right. helpful right yeah yeah so i would say um pharmaceutics again you know coming back to the same thing right that should be you know much much better you know in all aspects you know career so wise. what what pharmaceutics teach what people okay. do in pharmaceutics pharmaceutics yeah, so, industry yeah exactly so what they do is actually these are the people who design the you know dosage forms not okay. but you know i'm trying to i just try to you know put it in very common right. words like if right. some company wants to make a tablet you know or a capsule right. you know, right. which you take the ca- tablet act, a tablet has many components like, right. you know uh, seven to eight ingredients we call it as you know active substance and excipients so pharmaceutics the person who 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 studied or who did a good amount of work in the pharmaceutics the, these are the people who will design the formula right. Okay, so like in you know, X chemical, you add you know ten grams, mm-hmm. B you know add five grams. So the formula. So these gotcha. are the very key people who actually design the uh, dosage forms. Gotcha. So that is the reason you know they have more demand in the market. Okay. So technically, they they will be considered as research scientists or something, right? Uh, what what are the designations? Uh, they, they they kind of uh, they are formulation scientists. Formulation, formulation scientists. scientists. Scientist, because the formula, right? You know, as I told you, right. it's a formula, right? So right. they make the formulas. They call they they go by the name as a formulation scientist. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So what is the next one? So next one, um, regulatory affairs. I would say. Okay. What what do people do in regulatory affairs? Regulatory affairs is more of theory, like mm-hmm. you know, nothing like unlike uh, pharmaceutics where you actually work in the lab. So regulatory mm-hmm. is like you know more into theory based, where you read the regulations. So okay. pharmaceutical okay. industry is a highly regulated industry. You know, right, right, you know, right. US FDA. Right. Any drug which is to be marketed in the US should be get approved right. to the FDA. Right. So it's kind of a law, you know. Right. The law of the pharmacy. So right. That's what they read awesome. out these you know, regulations. Good, good to know. Yeah. Good, good to know that. Okay. And what is the other one you're saying? Pharmacology. 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 Mm-hmm. So this is. Uh, people who actually work in the lab doing uh, you know testing the drugs on animals you know lab animals oh, like okay. rats and mouse so okay. this is they call it as a pharmacology pharmacology oh, people right. usually does this and they go by the you know research scientist and all those you know other um, designations okay yeah. okay and what is the other one other one pharmaceutical chemistry okay. again Okay. I mean, mine is a general chemistry, but you know, there is uh, one other. I mean, more or less, it's the same, but you know, just uh, uh, wording is different. But chemistry, you, you can call it as. So these chemistry guys, they get into again research. So mm-hmm. in the research, they get into discovery group uh, where they actually, uh, you know, discover the new molecules. Wow. So the 
these guys are very fast in the you know drug development cycle chemistry guys oh, are nice. very very fast so, like you know when when you start from zero they are at that, at that point oh. so awesome. they, they are they actually develop the molecules yeah okay okay and uh, coming to the recent uh, course works like uh, uh, what do you say health informatics and uh, probably de- data analysis or whatever it is related to that and then data management right so how does they play a role uh, in the industry so what happens is especially as i told you these programs are you know relatively new in the united yes. states kind of you know not right so right. for to to get into health informatics or to do a job related in health info or you know <laughs> clinical data management that is some <laughs> some other thing so we don't need a pharmacy degree any life science degree oh, is okay. helpful okay so any, okay any bsc biology bsc botany zoology anything chemistry Any, okay. any life sciences, non-IT life science degree, okay. they are eligible to you know do this uh, healthcare informatics job Health and clinical data management. Okay, yeah. okay. Is, is it something uh, like mixed up with uh, IT? I, exactly. With exactly. IT? Okay. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. You are right. I mean that's absolutely correct. So I recently got to know. So during the coursework, they are learning these uh, IT languages like Python. Uh, oh, okay. You know, some other. Uh, so they i mean i i really don't know because i i never uh, looked, looked right. at that but you know few uh, folks right. spoke to me so right. yeah you are right absolutely so it's it it mixed okay and what about this data analysis and data management yeah. stuff data analysis data management there is, there is no such uh, specific masters program like you know it's not really required okay all you need is any life science degree and where you get to know on the job on, on the study <clears throat> yeah so the only uh, helpful thing uh, during this job is like what you learn in the pharmacy like all the vocabulary like you know drugs right. and all right. Th- those are you know that is going to help you in the job like clinical data management and there will be a software like you know it's not a okay you know, yes 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 and yes, you yes. just work on the software and all this stuff yeah not exactly. not much chemistry not much and, chemistry right and yeah. understood yeah. understood yeah. and what about the um, uh, production side like what kind of roles and which specialization mostly pushes to that right yeah that's a good question so formulation again you know pharmaceutics uh-huh. so as i told you they design the formula right so right. these are the guys uh, so basically we are talking about you know developing the new drugs right. so once they design the formula they check on the lab like lab level nothing but you know bench on bench top like you know very primitive prototype in other words in you know, a prototype okay and once if they want to scale it up then goes into the uh, like you know uh, what do you call production right so this guy, guys they handle the production like you know of course they are not going to manufacture by their own hands but they are the one who monitor it okay. like okay. so there are many people so to work in the pharmaceutical production area again coming back to uh, we don't need any specialization specialized degree okay. only you know any 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 you know bachelor degree because they will train right. you because you are right. working with a lot of instrumentation right right, right. so everything will be ready mm-hmm. uh, you know what to mix what not to mix how much we have to mix you know kind Understood. of this kind of stuff but if you have a degree like You know, specialized in pharmaceutics uh-huh. you will be the guy leading leading that okay. and there are people working under you okay understood okay and coming to visa what kind of visa like is it h1b or some other different visas applies to uh, pharma field yes h1b is uh, you know predominantly h1b okay there are other visas just to like you know l1 very very few, very few people i mean people very few yeah. people and um these days uh, o1 you know that is also very rare right yeah yeah but yeah h1b i would say you know try to limit our success with h1b that's our target yeah. okay 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 so so are there lot of employers who sponsor h1b will they be looking for only local candidates how does it work yeah again uh, thanks to covid because these days you know <laughs> there is there is more uh, increasing interest on the companies like you know right uh, when i started career like there is no linkedin I and mean, people don't care when you, you know, apply to the linkedin but now no matter what uh, if you have like you know good skill set and all people are hiring and there is uh, at least last 2 to 3 years there is uh, no such thing like if you are they like if they like you they are going to sponsor so there are many many companies many companies mm-hmm. but okay. unlike uh, very big pharma like you know pfizer no what is like you know top notch mm-hmm. pharma those are like you know they have company policy they don't really increase you know h1b mm-hmm. visas but uh, other than that you have many opportunities yeah. got it yeah. got it like how to find an employer so your strategy was you said someone referred you that there is a laboratory so 
probably you, in in the last 10 years you might guided many people right many students you might interacted with many many people reaching you yes. out on linkedin yes. or whatever it is yes. so yes. what is the most successful strategy you recommended them or that work that work in your field to i was the first job yeah Uh, to land the first, I would say you know connections again, you know, okay. because LinkedIn is very active these days. You know, it's a very good platform. There is right. no second alternative to that. Right. Try to see like you know, uh, go go through the profiles and you know, subscribe to LinkedIn Premium. Right. Of course, without yes. that, you yes. you are not allowed to send a message to someone. Message. Else. Right. Yeah, and try to reach out the people like right. uh, in the whatever you know area of interest, statistics or college, anything. You know, go through right. the profiles. Right. If you feel strongly and uh, try to draft a you know good. Message rather than very generic yes. message like right. you know, saying hey hi you know I need a job that's not going to work. That so, yes yeah yes. so personally sit and spend some time in drafting the message mm -hmm. reach out to them and maybe one out of ten or two out of ten might reply you back not everyone yeah so I would say is, success rate is two to three percent yeah uh, two to three out of hundred might respond to you yes but don't stop keep uh, exactly networking yeah. try to reach people yeah uh, somewhere. <laughs> some day or the other day yeah, yeah. something will work out and no. you will definitely get a job exactly so yeah bro so apart from uh, all the subjects and all uh, uh, coming to your family so where did you grown up and throw us some light <laughs> uh my, my mine um, um, my hometown is like about 3 hours from hyderabad okay um, which place bro then uh, it place name is usnabad usnabad uh, okay uh, it's a small small town and mm -hmm. uh, that's where i did my schooling and all mm -hmm. and then, then i completed my bachelor's in pharmacy in uh, wageshwari college of pharmacy that's um, uh, it's about 2 hours from hyderabad uh, okay yeah and uh, then yeah then i then i started working okay um, so, so until until my schooling was like in my home right. and then right. i moved right. my bachelor's of course then place to in between okay. yeah yeah so in, in between you also said that for one year you worked as uh, like kind of medical representative role Correct. so what are the challenges you faced at at that time is that is the time you motivated yourself to do your masters uh, uh <laughs> no actually yeah that's that's a very very good question so that that made like, like more uh, what to call when reality. i work the uh, reality <laughs> like reality wise i thought okay no matter what i should get out you know this is not the i mean ranbax was uh, i mean related to many other small companies ranbax is very big those days of course right. not, not anymore right. so i used to get in you know, a good good amount of you know, whatever the salary and on the treat you well and all but still you know right what the medical representative works you know take the bag and go right. to every hospital right. you know try to see the doctors you know convince right. them to write your uh, whatever the products company right. products and all so that really made me you know uh, it's very tough right. tough tough to right. do right um then uh, i was like you know um, aggressively looking like you know to get into you know some kind of program abroad yeah got gotcha. you I, I i was supposed to go to australia but some um, that was my top because mm -hmm. australia has a, li a little you know different exposure than the us but somehow okay. it didn't work and then i ended up here yeah. okay 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 and uh, let's say uh, there are bunch of people uh, did their specializations in different fields mm. okay but you know how it works doing a specialization is our choice but getting a job in specific field is not our choice because when we are in the market as we are applying 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 if we don't get our desired job right. we're going to demotivate at some point and we'll take whatever the one we get right 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 so does all these specialization people eligible mm -hmm. for any other like any major like uh, any field you guys are into okay so, so let's say pharmacology so right a person with any masters background can apply to that no actually not really i mean that okay. that brings me to tell you uh, one area where anyone can apply like okay know. okay so that is which i am from like you know chemistry related chemistry so i related. i started my work in the analytical uh, sector like you know where we actually test the drugs in the lab okay so for this testing purposes usually people really don't care your actual degree your major okay, okay your, your degree major. but uh, like if you want to do pharmaceutics and only you know for doses forms they they require pharmaceutics and if you want to work in the lab on the lab animals they require pharmacology degree so okay, these okay, are very okay. different okay so for analytical folks like me like i was analytical scientist all these years 
So we, anyone, anyone can, you know, usually apply and people do consider depending upon the need, the company really needs people. Of course, they're going to look at, they will ask you like, right, what's right, your knowledge right. and all, but most probably you're going to get the job, like, you know, right. not like, but only, you know, again, pharmaceutics related, you have, you should be having pharmaceutics degree to have that right. kind of job. Yeah. All right. So, so in, in batch itself most people will be having like b pharmacy or biotechnology or uh, m pharmacy uh, right. these days some people also having administrative side degrees also Correct. in in bachelors right mm-hmm. so i think engineering side that can be fit as per uh, my understanding does the management guys also fit to these these kind of roles if they if they do not get an opportunity in management side in the united states can they get into dive into engineering field? Uh, no, unfortunately, I really don't see any management guys getting because Understood. at least uh, to start the career, you should right. have some, you know, technical core core degree, like, you know, core uh, anything, you know, chemistry okay. or okay. at least to start. Right. But if you really want to make a career, you know, management you know, right. going forward, right. they can, they can switch. Later on, you okay. know, people... Later on. Okay. But Later initially on. to get initially, into the game, it's a little tough. Yes. Okay. So let's say if a management degree uh, uh, candidate mm-hmm. have a couple of core subjects, mm-hmm. uh, will it sufficient? Yes, it is sufficient. Okay. Yeah, it is sufficient. If you have some, because the very first job, they're going to ask you like what you want to do. And if you say like, I want to manage people, it does not not going to be any work. Correct? Right, right. So it's again coming, coming back to the mindset. If the person right. is ready to learn, right. work, you know, yeah. work for at least a couple years in the industry to learn in and out, right. then there's a, there are very good chances. Okay. But if you say like, you know, I have an, you know, management side, I, I want to, I, I need a team, I'm going to manage people, you know, mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, are there any certifications in your field? Let's say in engineering side, we have uh, some certifications called P, FE, PE, and a lot of certifications for different kinds of things. And right. also some management certifications like PMP, CCM, or CMM. Uh, right. So, are there any specific certifications that adds value to your profile and form of field? Uh, not many, but I would I, I can recommend a couple couple certifications. Mm-hmm. Like um, mm-hmm. one is a uh, regulatory affairs, like which I'm doing currently. Like you know, that is my area okay. of job. So there okay. is a certification called RAC, regulatory R-A-C. affairs. Yeah, regulatory okay. affairs certification. Okay. So that is very quite uh, tough to you know crack it, but okay. if you have that. Definitely, you know, you, you are like, you know, uh, you, people will treat you in a unique way okay. if you have that certification. Okay. Um, it's not quite popular among, uh, you know, upcoming students because they really, you know, because right. you, need, you need to spend so many hours to read and, you know, write the exam and all. Right. And uh, second is the one which you mentioned, the project management stuff, like, you know, P, mm-hmm. uh, project PMP. Management, the PMP. Yeah. That will help you. That will help you. That helps. To, okay. Yeah, that helps. Good to have that. Probably in, uh, in executive roles or managerial roles, yes, it might help, yes, but it does it really yeah. help in entry level? No, entry level, it's not going to help, but I would see that, that maybe that it's might an add a little value. You, yes, it's an add-on. Add you, add on add on you can say that, you know, right. uh, have these certifications, you know. So people might have that, you know, good, good uh, impression on you. Okay, this, right. this guy is like, you know, yeah. All right. so, good good okay. to have it. I mean, no harm, no harm in, you know, getting the certification. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and uh, the other thing, most people have this question. How about the salary ranges? <laughs> <laughs> how much I make in my first job? And what is the maximum we can make? So let's say an average job in, across the country. Let's say probably let's divide into uh, a Cal- California and tax-free states like Florida and Texas and okay. some of the states like North Carolina. So based on the these three areas, what can be the uh, average salary range uh, in your field? For the entry level, beginner, for the fresher, yeah. yeah. For the beginner, it's uh, around 60K per annum. 60K, okay. No matter uh, which location it is. No matter which location it is. Okay, okay. But I, I do, you know, uh, getting information like, you know, last one year, there are a few folks who mm-hmm. ended up with uh, 70, 75 to like, you know, okay. especially Boston, Boston, you know, California. Okay. Uh, San Diego, you know, Bay Area and all. Okay. Uh, but I would say being, you know, try to be conservative, 60K would be, you know, your target, like, kind of. Initially. Okay. Initial. Uh, let's say a five years experienced guy. Uh, I know 
uh, different parameters uh, uh, will be yeah. under consideration in your growth. Right. Uh, so what can be the average uh, salary for a five year and a 10 year guy? In this five years, five years, I would say you might be you know, making close to 100K. 100K, okay. Uh, that being again, as you said, you know, rightly said, depending upon so many things, right. not everyone makes. Uh, right, right. Not so everyone can make it. Yes. Make five years I have to make uh, some... Uh, Good moves. switches, good moves, right. you know, improve right. yourself, so many, so many things. Um, yeah, close to 100. And 10 years, definitely, you should be in a position to make uh, I mean, at least 120 and okay. above. That would be very okay. minimum. Okay. Maybe 120 to 150. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 10 okay. years. Not bad, good. not bad, which is good. Yeah. Because yeah. most people uh, compare with IT salaries, right? So that is where people will start. Okay. Uh, if I make 60k and in IT they are making 100k, uh, people will compare it, right? right? So we should accept it. Like should accept initially, it. it will be we will be little less in core yes. field, yes. but later on, um, with the experience, uh, definitely the salary will increase. Yes, absolutely. And only core fields are uh, suitable for people who are really. Uh, uh, motivated and interested in these fields absolutely absolutely 100 percent. yeah right rightly said you are right right yeah. so if you if you consider money 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 then it, it might not this be is, the right field yeah this is not <laughs> better make your mind and you know switch to somewhere yeah and that's right. a problem yeah right um and coming coming back to your roles so you started you said you started with uh, uh, retail pharmacy as an intern and then so far it's, you said it's a, almost 10 good years in 10 years what all roles you 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 changed and uh, did you, you switched any majors like let's say uh, from research to uh, regulatory efforts or whatever it is right how did it help you so total three questions yeah so, so i but I mean, most of my, all these 10 years, like I would say nine years, nine plus years, I most uh, primarily I'm doing analytical work where I started my career, like, you know, as an analytical chemist. Okay. And I was in analytical in a sector, like, you know, okay. Say, okay. Uh, analytical group, I mean, group is the right word, so analytical group. So, okay. but, you know, within the group, I I changed quite a bit of companies. Okay. Like I did change um, many companies. In how, many, how many? Yeah. How many companies? <laughs> this, is my, this is my seventh so, company. Seventh company, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, taking into consideration the very first company, the small lab, which I told you. Right, right, right. Everything. Right, right, right. So, okay. I mean, that really, you know, once you, that's how I, you know, uh, expanded my you know, knowledge or whatever, you know. Um, and, but yeah, analytical, I'm purely analytical. But now I'm, sw I switched to regulatory. Yeah, like, regulatory. You know, uh, uh, I'm doing as, you know, regulatory stuff now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. So, what? played a crucial role like which company and which role played a crucial role in your career uh, to gain more knowledge and uh, uh, gain more uh, uh, understanding on the market yeah so that's a good question so i i, I was uh, i was in new jersey for almost four four and a half years okay so yes i would say so okay. new jersey again i'm coming back to maybe let me give you a brief uh, description the pharma industry there are you know two major uh, divisions one is a uh, new new molecules where you actually develop the new drugs okay the second one is a generic industry generic. where you make industry. a copy of okay. so i started my care, my career in generic okay so four five years first five years were in, uh, in generic industry okay. so generic you don't have much scope to make money much scope to learn also like it's very limited okay. Okay. So then I moved to Chicago, so which is like, you know, kind of semi, I came out of that generic atmosphere mm -hmm. I, into the new kind of, you know, not like 100% new, but, you know, uh, relatively new, new, new molecule, the company which, which would do the new molecule. Okay. So that, that, that really helped me, uh, which I didn't re realize then, okay. but now I realize that because that is, that is a ma major, like what you call breakthrough. Okay. okay. Coming okay. out of that generic, uh, from okay. East Coast, then I ended up in Central. Uh, right. sorry, midway, midwest right. yeah so uh, and uh, from there I, I was there for four years and right. then then i ended up in a company which completely does a all new brand new right yeah and, and of course you know that really helped me but yeah this is one other suggestion i would give like for students uh if you want to target target for like companies which actually you know in this new molecule business rather okay. than uh you know uh, generic 
side okay so that will that will make a huge difference if okay. you if you are fortunate to end up in these companies very beginning of your career right. you will move very fast understood which, which didn't happen in my case but yeah okay so how do you find these companies like is uh, like how, i know we can google and find but is there any specific uh, website or portal or any specific resource where we can find and uh, filter these companies right. before reaching right so maybe one advice is uh, uh, go to uh, go, uh, get into the website of the company and try to read it you know they have like if you if you check any for example pfizer okay. if you type in a pfizer and there will be a you know very interaction what they do exactly mm-hmm. so that is one way to quickly understand right so they will say that, that you know we are developing the new molecule something like that or what, companies like generic they they explicitly they say that you know we are in genetic industry right. the very first line and right. there you go and second is if you really want a list of the companies fda there is a website on the fda fda okay. uh, fda website okay. if you go to like you know drug sections in the drugs oh. under drugs okay. and uh, there is a um, uh, one other you know um, what do you call under, under the drug there is one other link called in you know, orange okay. book you know people okay. call it as orange book okay. and there you have all the approved drugs so far okay. in the industry okay. and you can check the company okay. name so that okay. gives you very good idea like you know what are all the companies right like okay. you know that is one way okay yeah. okay yeah. so let's say if someone approached you uh, what do you look in the candidate to hire them first thing is especially if you ask me now especially people coming from our part of the country back in india like i would i would definitely look for if they are ready to work in the lab or in whatever ground level or if they are expecting like you know not like you know it right we have to be you know physically doing the experiments in the lab and all all this you know research side or whatever right. the lab side so first we need that uh, mindset you know okay. they should be ready to you know as you right. rightly said accept the right. reality right. and ready to you know do hard work and all right. but if, if people are expecting like you know because there is so much of influence it influence on the folks right so right. they really don't know like you know so they yeah. expect like you know they'll expectations give you expectations versus do, reality yes <laughs> so they they people, folks think that you know you, you get a laptop on the same day ah. and they ask you to see home and you know that is not going to happen right right, right. so so now so it that is, is a very key. yes yeah. now it is a lot of people are getting demotivated and switching their careers mm. right though they have interest they are not getting an opportunity so they are switching their careers so what can we do to stop it or, or else what is that one advice you give uh, you know uh, because everyone will have that struggle for their first job correct after that things will completely change right we will play the game not not the employers yes. right yes so what is that initial strategy and and again you know try to again coming back to the same uh, reality expectation like make yourself clear like first thing is if you want to make money simple like if you really want to lot of make lot of money you know and you know if you can wait for few years once you are clear with that thoughts you know that will help you right other than that some people there are because i i, I speak to so many students they will say like you know maybe i'll try for one two years and then see that's not mm-hmm. going to you know again then it's a waste right. of time like two years right. you waste here right. you know rather than go to you know join some other so try to and before that try to understand the pharma like you know since we are talking about pharmaceutical industry and all try to understand what what we are doing like what these folks are doing right. and if you have genuine interest in that like if to be a part in the drug development cycle and all interest drives you know that like what is the cycle bro uh, just pick the, how does it work okay. the okay. pharma uh, fail okay okay like, that's a good I, question yeah spend a little yeah. bit about that cycle yeah sure actually so i was about to say that so drug development you call it as a drug development completely how it works is starts with the developing the new molecule okay. which is you know a research site discovery group where mm-hmm. they actually develop the new molecule nothing but i'm just trying to put in the very lay words like you know paracetamol right you know paracetamol right. tablet right. you know that was of course here we use tylenol right. which is astaminophen right. okay so astaminophen is a molecule right. so first they will, they will what you call they will discover that molecule and they develop it meaning that okay this drug when it goes into the patient this is going to, and they are going to you know, get get better so mm-hmm. that's how they develop the molecule and from there it goes into the preclinical work preclinical and just broadly preclinical which is testing on the animals okay. like lab animals like rats mouses and all you know dogs people mm-hmm. uh, pigs so preclinical work they they make a formula like you know they make a tablet or they make a injection with the molecule and they inject in there and see if there is any side effects on the lab animals and 
no oh, such kind okay. of stuff okay so they check for safety mm-hmm. like you know animal should not not going to be die you know right, right, right. but you know unfortunately it happens because we yeah, don't right. know right how the dog is going to behave right. in the body right and in the lab level if it was successful like you know safety and efficacy they call it as you know two different uh, words safety is you should not have any uh, side effects right. efficacy is you should feel better if you take okay. that drug from pre pre clinical you get get into clinic so clinic is nothing but there are three phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 clinical trials where you actually inject the drug into patients real oh, patients okay. real human okay. beings okay so healthy healthy volunteers oh there would be some volunteers, volunteers. what is the they get paid. risk for these volunteers <laughs> uh it is risky but again you know you need to sign you know based on the person consent he will sign and you know you will say okay like wh- why do they choose happen. it why do they choose it when they know there is some uh, uh, risk involved they get finances right you know again coming back to it because they get paid oh they, they get, get paid obviously paid. for the money though they we though we call it as volunteer but they get, but they get paid they get right paid. they get paid and if it is something like a blockbuster molecule or something which is really you know um what do you call uh, risky sometimes gotcha. and they 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 give you more money more risk more reward right They're ready to you know uh, give your body for experimentation you know mm-hmm. kind of they get paid whatever so yeah for the money and people give them for the money there is no other uh, what do you call broad uh, thing where you are sacrificing your body uh-huh. for the uh, uh-huh. humanity no that's not the case people do right. it for money yeah. got you yeah and in the clinic if, if the results are good then uh-huh. we apply then we submit the application for approval uh-huh. to the fda fd us fda yeah. okay and fda takes like you know couple years close to couple years to to get it approved or deny mm-hmm. and once they approve then you market it and then okay. that's how you you buy it from pharmacy yeah okay okay understood um so in this process uh, how many different engineering groups will be involved okay yeah that's that's a good question so engineering thing plays a role during uh, making the batch you know beginning of our conversation i was talking about initially you make the what you call batch you know, nothing but you know making a uh, Uh, batch of tablets like you know uh-huh. 100 tablets for right. example you make 100 tablets right. so you right. call it as a batch okay right. so this batch on the lab level uh, people who works in the lab like you know me whatever you know they they take care of it mm-hmm. but once everything is done you want to scale mm-hmm. it up like you know bring that into manufacturing Pro- level and production side are. okay production side that's where this actual engineering guys engineering guys okay they, they deal with it folks uh-huh. you have to have you know it validations all the equipment and all Right. You know, engineering validation, IQ, Q, P, Q. Probably, I'm trying to use the same terminology. Right, right. They call right. it as right. installation qualification, right. performance qualification, all this kind of stuff. So there comes the role of actual engineers and you know IT, IT engineers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So mostly yeah. they they come under uh, production side. Production okay. side. Yeah. Okay. Manufacturing okay. Nice. production. Yeah. Sure. Nice. Uh, um, and uh, someone is asking something about Naplex. What is that? Okay, so Naplex is a um, uh, community pharmacy. Like uh, as I told you again, pharma. If you talk about community, nothing but if you want to become a registered pharmacist in the United States. Okay. Nothing but back in India, we have a B pharmacy, right? Once right, you right, do right. the B pharmacy, you get a certificate and you can start a retail pharmacy shop. Retail pharmacy store, right? But here in US, in order to work <laughs> in the retail pharmacy as a pharmacist, mm-hmm. you need to get a license. Mm. So, unfortunately, we don't have very straight uh, path for that. if you do four year degree in india which is like mm-hmm. bachelor in pharmacy right then you have to complete a pharmd which mm-hmm. is a three year program here in us okay uh, uh, and then you have to write the exam called naplex naplex so this exam. is yeah this examination where you have i think two or three stages at least okay. for our four stages okay. you have to clear stage 1 stage 2 and then it's it's very extensive you know mm-hmm. thing uh, okay. very few guys uh, end up you know doing that If you clear the NAPLEX, then you are eligible to apply for the license. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you know every state, each state has their own license board, like you know pharmacy board. Right. If you want to work in California, apply to the California state board. Mm-hmm. And of course, you have to qualify NAPLEX. NAPLEX should be cleared, and then apply. They get a license. Then you can apply jobs to Walgreens, CVS, or any retail pharmacy. Right, yeah. right, right, right. That right, is right. NAPLEX. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. So. Yeah, bro. I think pretty much we covered everything. Did I miss any questions? No, no, no that no, are no, important. Uh, no, 
I think yeah, we covered almost everything. Yeah, but rightly you said, you know, people who have who have, who have genuine interest, you know, they can choose mm-hmm. coming here. It takes right. a while to get into you know good stage in the career wise, like the money wise, you know, whatever. Right. But right. beginning days are going to be tough. Right. Uh, don't get demotivated and all, you know, such kind of things. Yeah. Okay. I reach out to people on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. That is the easiest way. Easiest. Yeah. Easiest. Way. Yeah. Where you will get access to the people. Yes. Yeah, so definitely in US, references plays a big role. Yes. So we have to find out if anyone of our friends or family, family have any yeah. connections in that field and get yes. their reference so that it will be easy to land a job. That's okay. correct. Yeah, networking. Right. Yeah. right. So uh, just like any other uh, companies, nowadays, you know, uh, during the application, they'll ask, do you need sponsorship? If you say sponsorships, most companies will take out your resume or application from the portal. Uh, does it same applicable to pharmacy as well or uh, we'll get uh, more consideration uh, here? I mean, to be frank, yeah, again, it's a red flag kind of, you know, if you always say sponsorship, because some some companies, they were very clear mm. in the job description itself. They ask you only person who have authorization to work should apply. Right, very right, clear right. That. Right. But uh, as I told you, you know, after the pandemic, things changed very dramatically for, you know, life science mm-hmm. and people. So people right. are considering, like, even though if you are, if you, if you need a sponsorship and all, they still consider if you have, like, you know, good experience, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Uh, I mean, keep keep applying. Doesn't matter, like, you know, be be, be honest to yourself. Like, if you need a sponsorship, say, say the same thing. Okay. Like, but still, it's not going to, you know, now it is Yeah, possible. but I would say, I would say, uh, you don't need to ask sponsorship initially. First thing exactly. is like get a job. Yes. Just tell them that you have three years uh, work permit. Yes. So yes. get a job, perform well, and then talk about sponsorship. Yes. So and right from the yes. beginning, if you ask this, people will okay. Come on, yes. man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll go with right. some other yes. candidate. You are right. right. You are right. I right. Yeah. OPT. Even, I forgot completely about OPT. Yes. You are right. The yes. OPT doesn't make sense to talk about H one B very. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 If, if we initiate the topic initially itself, they're going to cut it down. Right, right, right. So, yeah, bro, I think we pretty much spoke on a lot of things. We uh, we did address a lot of things. And uh, if people are willing to reach out to you, either on LinkedIn or some other way, I, okay, I don't want to uh, disclose your <laughs> I'll mention your Instagram ID. Probably people might already saw, saw saw this live and they might be reaching out now. But to avoid in future, I, I'm not going to mention your Inst- Instagram ID in the description. No. But coming to LinkedIn, is that fine? If people reach out to you, uh, will you be able to uh, give some guidance? Like whenever possible. Yeah. It's not like you cannot help everyone, but definitely when you get some time you can help one or two people if possible try to do some content on your linkedin uh, that helps some students right yeah definitely definitely you know any any time any time people can you know uh, reach me maybe i can give my email address too maybe you can okay. can just uh, yeah so, so what is your linkedin ID? linkedin id linkedin id i go with uh, uh, dudam anil uh, my last name d u d a m okay dudam a n i l yeah anil is my first name awesome bro yeah. It was very nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you for joining. <laughs> and sure. do you have any any other words to talk to say to the upcoming graduates? Yeah, uh, I would say like you know try to uh, if you have real passion to get into pharmaceutical industry, mm-hmm. make yourself. But uh, before making a decision, talk talk to people and uh, gauge yourself like where you are really fit. If you want to get into some you know IT or whatever stuff, make it clear before. And don't right. waste the time. Right. And if you are here for any reason, and keep keep doing whatever you are doing. Early days would be tough, but no, later on, trust me, trust the process. I would say, trust right. the process. Trust the process. And you are, you are, yeah, you are going to be, you know, you are going to be great. right. Yeah. Right. Awesome, bro. Uh, very nice having you. Thank you very much for joining. Thank I'll you. Talk to you later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Bye. Thanks, bro. Bye. Bye.